Hello and welcome to the review you've all been waiting for. It is my review of the Warbringer Nemesis Titan from Forgeworld. This model will set you back a grand total of £1,018. It's one of the most expensive models. It's the third most expensive model that Forge World produce after the Warlord Titan and the Tau Manta. Therefore, it being a thousand pounds and in the top three, I think it would equate to less than half a percent of the entire Forge World product range. So try not to look at this model as all Forge World models at this price. This is one of the most expensive models in a group of expensive models from a more expensive offshoot of Games Workshop. Now the body with the Quake Cannon, when I first purchased the uh, model, um, you could get the body separately and the Quake Cannon separately. And I think the Quake Cannon was about 120 pounds or so, which is the big gun on the top. Now you have to get the uh, body and the Quake Cannon together. So initially I thought that they had some grand idea of producing a different weapon on the top, like a Plasma Annihilator or some kind of Vortex Missile. I'm pretty sure they'll still bring out a Vortex Missile for the uh, Reaver Titan. But still, um, I think they ditched that idea uh, quite early on. Uh, so now you can only get the body with the Quake Cannon. And that will set you back £819. Then the head is £63. And then the two Reaver class uh, weapons, both of those Volcano Cannons, are £68 each. One thing I need to announce straight away about the Reaver class Titan weapons is that when Forge World uh, made this model and brought it out and brought out these new volcano cannons because we never had the volcano cannons before they refreshed all of the Reaver Battle Titan weapons so if you now pick up a Gatling Blaster or a, a Melter Cannon or, or a Reaver Laser Blaster they're all new kits and if you've got a Reaver Titan I'd highly suggest you pick up uh, one of the new weapons um, because it does make a difference. So this is going to be a very beefy review. Um, it's, a, it's an expensive model. Um, if you're thinking about getting one, I hope you've followed my um, build guide series where I go through pretty much all the steps I would normally go through on a Titan. I've built a few Titans now. I built the Reaver, I built the Warlord, I built the Warhounds, and now this Nemesis. So I've built every Titan that um, Forge World have to offer. I'll start off by saying, if you do enjoy this content, and the build guides and you want to support the channel please do use my element games affiliate link in the uh, description and the comments below that really helps the channel out more than anything and it can save you 25 percent off your uh, warhammer goodness likewise you could consider uh, becoming a member of the channel where you'll get uh, exclusive items and behind the scenes videos so this is going to be a very thick chunky review i'm going to look at all kinds of parts on this model some of it might break off because I haven't glued everything on there um, for many obvious reasons which I'll go through uh, but essentially uh, all the armor plates you see are just held on by white tack so I'm playing a little bit of a game of buckaroo if you've ever played that where you add bits to a, a mule or donkey and uh, at any moment it could kick them all off and that's the, the case right now so I'm on a bit of a time pressure what we'll do first is we'll have a look at all of the weapons individually and the head and then we'll go from the toes and work our way upwards. So firstly these weapons, as I said, one of these weapons will set you back £68. I haven't glued the armor plates on as I said, uh, but I have magnetized them using a really nice strong round disc uh, magnet. Um, please check out the Warbringer build guide for the size of magnets that I do use. I've used a lot of magnets on this model. Uh, but yeah, I've gone for the Volcano Cannons, mainly because, well, game terms, they're 180 inches, and I wanted something that's long range, because having a 48 inch range Melter Cannon uh, on a weapons platform that has a Quake Cannon of a 480 inches just doesn't cut it, in my opinion. Um, that Quake Cannon is a Titan Killer. It's super effective against everything. 
So I didn't want to give this Titan any kind of handicap by giving it much shorter weapons. Um, I'd rather give that to uh, like a Reaver Titan. We'll go through all of the rules much later on, but as I say, this is gonna be a big, big uh, review. Um, so this is one of the new uh, Volcano Cannons. It's 100% compatible with uh, the Reaver Titan, so I can just swap this out and put it in the Reaver Titan, and I'm good to go. Reaver Titan's now got a uh, Volcano Cannon. Um, I've gone for two of them. There are other weapons, of course, like the aforementioned uh, Reaver Melter Cannon. You can also give it a Reaver Laser Blaster or a Reaver Gatling Blaster. But unlike the Reaver, you can't give it a Reaver Power Claw. So no close combat for, for this one. So that's the, uh, the two Battle Titan weapons. It's also got two uh, Mauler Bolt Cannons, which can rotate. Uh, they don't go up and down, but they do rotate. Um, they're the same two Mauler Bolt Cannons that the uh, Warlord Titan has. Um, you've then got these anti-air weapons called the Anvilus Pattern Defense Batteries. They're a decent 72 inch range and they get uh, eight shots each. So you've got 16 anti-flyer shots pumping out there, um, which is gonna be more than enough to, to protect it at the strength eight. As I say, I'll go through the, the rules for them, but uh, I've magnetized them with these little magnets. Just because I don't want the, the weapon platforms you know, rattling about. Um, I prefer them to be uh, kind of stuck on there solidly and it, it kind of slows down the movement of them as well. I much prefer that. Then you've got the whopper of a, a cannon right here. This is one of the reasons, if not the reason, to get the Nemesis Warbringer, which is the Nemesis Quake Cannon. It's a massive 480 inch range, macro 3D6, strength 16, AP minus five, damage six, and you can target uh, units that are not visible and any attacks made by it means that that unit can only move half distance and can't advance so incredibly suppressing weapon here it's a it's a thick one it's got a lot of girth on it you can probably hide a pack of rollos all the way down in the the center if you were to drill it out <laughs> but yeah i absolutely love this this big gun it's it's incredible um it's a shame that you can't get it separately anymore because uh, you know, you could build a some kind of bunker or something or weapons platform and slot this on it and it would make such a cool terrain piece like a, an anti-orbit uh, ship weapon. Um, that would be insane. Uh, but there we go. That's the Quake Cannon, a massive big weapon. And uh, that is actually uh, loose at the moment because I will be gluing it once I've sprayed all in there and then uh, picked out all the detail and the nuts and bolts, then I'll be in the position to, to glue it uh, quite solidly on there and that's where it will stay. Um, I like how erect it is as well. The angle isn't too uncomfortable. With the angle being uh, as it is, I think it gives just the right amount of intimidation factor. Then the final weapon I'll bring your attention to is uh, uh, the little tail gun. It's just a baller bolt cannon there. So uh, that's a bit more of a point defense uh, kind of uh, weapon. The actual entry into the Titan is a little bit lower um, than the, the Warlord. And uh, to be fair, it does offer uh, any kind of assailants a bit more cover because of the uh, ammunition hoppers uh, for the gun. However, it's a bit more of a cramped space and, and I guess any unit or whoever getting even close to that door would just be deafened um, to death by, by the uh, Quake Cannon firing. There's probably smaller point defense weapons in there, um, maybe little lasers and things which we can't see. Uh, I doubt that this is the only, only thing. So that's it for the weapons. Uh, even though just looking at it, you think, oh, well, it's probably only got three or five weapons. It's actually got eight weapons on there. Three more bolt cannons, two Anvilus pattern defense batteries, and then the two arm weapons, either the Volcano Cannons or whatever you want to equip it with, and the big uh, Quake Cannon on the top. Now, other parts that I've magnetized are of course the Void Shields in 8th edition, and I guess 9th edition as well, we haven't got the Compendium book yet, but in 8th edition they did away with, uh, you know, number of Void Shields, oh, one Void Shields down, uh, so you take it off. I've magnetized them anyway, just for giggles, um, but you can uh, magnetize them. I would suggest you uh, use two millimeter by two millimeter magnets anyway, but please do, yeah, as I say, check out the magnet um, review, but one millimeter by two or one millimeter by one even is, it depends on the strength, but that would still work. Anyway, moving back to the void shields, they've done away in these rules of uh, if it's got like 
six void shields and that each void shield counts as armor 12. Um, as soon as you hit tw uh, 12 or more, then the void shield just collapses. They've done away with that. Uh, what they've done is for each Titan, they've kind of put the severity of the void shield. So this one, it's void shields. If it's got between 40 and 65 wounds, then uh, the void shield's a three plus save. It's got a two plus normal and a three plus uh, void shield save. And if you're very new to void shield, you don't know how they work. Well, basically void shield saves can be used to um, shrug off mortal wounds. So um, very, very strong. But looking at this, the next thing I've done uh, is I've also magnetized the ammo hopper hoppers as well uh, using these magnets. As you can see, I've been very greedy and used all of the holes and uh, put some decent sized magnets in there that are very, very, very strong. Um, and that is because if and when they did change the, the main weapon on the top of there, then I could easily change it to the different ammo type, whether it's big um, plasma battery uh, capacitors or whatever, um, I, can, I can then do that. And that is actually something that the uh, construction guide suggests that you do. The other two things that I haven't magnetized but I have white tacked on here are the, the, the some of the crew. So you get the, like a little titan tech priest or servitor guy, uh, he looks more like a tech priest to be fair. He's got some kind of uh, monocular type um, targeting mechanism and also I've got uh, the princeps as well. Uh, I don't know why he's got a walking stick, it's quite interesting but they're completely optional. You can put them on bases and then you can put them on there. I'm going to paint them separately and glue them on the top because I think it's great because it gives a sense of scale uh, to the model. So this then leads us to the head. Again, I've magnetized this. I haven't magnetized the top uh, or this and it is a bit loose in there, but you've got the, the princeps and the moderati. Um, they're all loose. They're not glued in because I want to uh, paint them, uh, take them out and paint them all individually, but you can magnetize. The, the top of the head um, in, in there if you wish. But once this front face plate and all of these are glued on, that's the only thing that will be loose. And that does fit on there quite snugly. Uh, but that's the uh, head and as I say, magnetized it. You don't need to magnetize these pipes. If you use a hairdryer, they're just gonna slot in very well into the neck. The only sort of downside with the head and the, uh, the cabling is you can't move the head and put it in a different sort of um, position like you can on the, well, the Warlord, the Reaver and the, uh, and the Warhound, to be fair. So that's like a big summary overview of the model and a look at some of the weapons. Let's have like a closer flyby look. This is gonna be a free cam um, part of the video. So hopefully it won't make you too sick, uh, but if it does, just skip to uh, a little bit later on in the video. Okay, so here's like the little flyby. You can see some of the detail and things on here um, and the armor plates and the toes and the fact that I've, I've put it on one toe on the, the right leg. You can see the cabling, see some of the pistons and the hips. Again, if you want closer details of all these parts, please do check out the build guide. Uh, all of the armor plates at the moment are just held on by white tack, uh, but I thought I'd give you Sort of like a closer view of some of the detail that you can expect with uh, one of these models. Um, the Warlord is looming in the back. We're going to have a look at some of the spare parts and then we'll uh, go through the uh, size comparisons with all the other Titans. If you want to see how big this uh, Warbringer is to Knights, I do have a separate Warbringer Knight uh, size comparison video. I like the uh, kind of monoscopes or um, binoculars they've got on the uh, the walkway there. That's really cool. Um, the uh, interesting thing, if you watch any of the build guides, is that the hips um, aren't magnetized, so you can move. Uh, the torso freely and yeah because you don't need to magnetize it it just sits on there it's a really really excellent design and I just wish they'd incorporated that onto the warlord so there you go let's have a look at the spare parts okay so you don't get many spare parts um, but you get all of these cables and uh, connectors for the weapons 
So if you wish to glue the weapons completely to this Nemesis, I wouldn't really advise it because I'd always like to have the option of putting the, the Reva laser blasters on there or the Gatling blasters for maximum DACA. Uh, then, yeah, you, you can choose to uh, glue all of the cabling and glue the uh, pistons, but I'd advise you to do that after you painted the weapons separately. So you've got these connectors and you've also got the connectors and these connectors uh, you would typically use for a Reva Titan. The Reva Titan needs the connectors, uh, the Nemesis needs just... So the Reva Titan would need the connectors and the cabling. Um, the connectors would go on the weapon, the cabling would go to the Reva Titan. This Nemesis only needs the cabling because of the way that they've designed the Nemesis with the, the new weapons. Hope that makes sense. Then you also get a, a spare toe, only one spare toe, uh, but uh, you can use it left or right. And um, the, the front is a bit bent on purpose, like it's stepping or like it's just um, taking its, its foot off. I don't really need to use that. Uh, I'm not a huge fan anyway, because I think you get less of a contact uh, area if you're gonna use it as a, like a front toe. Um, and then for some reason I got a spare armor plate, could put that on a base maybe, and also, you get a uh, princeps chair um, without the, the princeps in it because you get one with him in and one, you know, with him out. Again, not sure why you do that, but it is cool, you know, to have a nemesis um, sort of deactivated, shut down, whatever, uh, with no crew inside if you don't want to do it that way. So they're all the spare parts that you get with this model. Okay, so now we're on my favorite part of these videos, which is the size comparisons. Absolutely love uh, this part of the video. We're going to compare it to all of the other Titans and then we're going to compare it to other kind of Titan sized walkers and machines. I don't own any Eldar Titans or the Tyranid Titan so uh, yeah unfortunately I can't uh, give you a size comparison with those um, but what I can do is I can start off by giving you a, a comparison with the smallest uh, Titan, the Scout Titan otherwise known as a uh, Warhound. So as you can see there, there's the Warhound on the right. Uh, one of those models now, uh, unfortunately, cost you about £430. When I bought mine, it was 250 which is great. Uh, but yeah, they've gone up a bit. The next Titan I wanted to uh, showcase next to the Nemesis is the Reva Titan. Uh, right here, um, the Nemesis is far bigger, uh, but a Reva Titan will cost you uh, about £300 less with the weapons because you have to get the uh, Apocalypse launcher separately, unfortunately, and the two main Reva class weapons, you have to get those separately too. Um, so that's about £701. The Reva Titan is still a very impressive bit of kit. It has a fully detailed interior and a detailed cockpit. Um, you've got plenty of options to magnetize many parts. It is getting a bit of an old model. The instructions aren't that good at all. Nowhere near as good as the uh, Nemesis. So just bear that in mind uh, if you were kind of on the fence and wanted to save some money. Uh, also number of weapons. The Reaver only has the three main weapons, but you can have these volcano cannons on it along with the Apocalypse. And that is an excellent uh, Titan killer option whereas of course the nemesis has those eight weapons not only including the massive uh, quake cannon at the top which is ridiculous range but also it's got some anti-air and point defense weaponry so for an extra 300 pounds in my opinion game terms it's worth the upgrade and in terms of the kit and the quality of the kit it is uh, if you can afford a reaver then my best advice is to just upgrade and spend a little bit more money and get the uh, nemesis however if you like the look of the reaver more don't let that stop you. It's still uh, an incredible model and definitely one of the biggest uh, models out there and very intimidating. It's just the Nemesis is so much kind of wider and bigger. It's, it's almost the size of the Warlord. Um, it's very, very close. I'd say it's closer to the Warlord than the Reaver. And that's the next size comparison that we're going to do right now. One thing I've forgotten right at the start is uh, to talk about the instruction guides. Absolutely amazing. All of these are not your uh, typical uh, black and white um, A4 photocopy pages like you'd get with the Reaver and, and the Warhound. Um, these are full-blown, exploded view, colour, uh, CAD uh, instruction guides. They're, they're incredible. They give you uh, plenty of um, suggestions to magnetise things. This is the main guide uh, right here. Um, and I think I showed this on uh, one of the live streams. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, it gives you... Yeah, it gives you suggestions to magnetize things and magnetize the weapons, but it's a fantastic guide. And if you're on the fence about this and the Warlord, 
you get this amazing um, kind of guide with both of those uh, Titans. Okay, this is kind of like the best I can do, guys, in terms of uh, uh, where this is going for the, the size comparisons. Um, what I will do is just rotate the, the camera around, but that gives you an idea of how big um, the, the Warlord is, but it also gives you an idea of kind of how big the, the Nemesis is. Um, if you were to look at the size right there, it's, I don't know, Dreadnought or two taller, the Warlord. Um, these massive weapons, uh, these massive carapace weapons. And these massive carapace weapons really do um, add the, the height to the Warlord, as well as the um, void shield generators and the power vents and things like that. The, the head is only a little bit taller than the Nemesis. Um, but the Nemesis has this uh, really cool gantry way where you can put troops or whatever. Um, and the, the weapon is uh, ginormous, let's face it. If we were to compare it to uh, by the coast of Volcano Cannon, you can see that from base to tip, uh, the Volcano Cannon is a little bit longer, just a little bit like the actual cannon, like the whole uh, weapon itself. But what it beats it in slight length, uh, the Quake Cannon, um, definitely beats it in girth. So what you're getting is a Warlord class weapon on the top of the Nemesis, um, which is quite a big deal. So yeah, in some ways you could say that the Nemesis is a bit of a jack of all trades, but uh, without a doubt, its uh, strengths lie in ultimate long range firepower and it can fire at um, enemies that it can't see, along with some excellent anti-air defense weaponry and point defense weaponry. It really takes strengths of all of the other Titans and puts them into one. What the Warlord beats it on is its Bellicosa Volcano Cannons, uh, which are better strength, they're strength 30, and they also have a ridiculous armor penetration, which is minus six. but the damage is still 12. However, the Bellicosa also has this uh, any roll made of a six uh, with the attack, automatically inflicts an additional D6 uh, mortal wounds on the target. So um, those Bellicosa Volcano Cannons are absolutely insane um, and, and not to be overlooked. But of course the Warlord, you can equip it with a multitude of carapace weapons, whereas the Nemesis, you can only equip it with that, with the uh, Quake Cannon at the moment. Um, you know, I've got the Apocalypse Missile Launchers for the Warlord, which just bumps up the range and allows it to strip away uh, the wounds and the Void Shields of uh, other Titans. So, that, so currently the Warlord has uh, more freedom in terms of the, the carapace weapons it can mount. And this is only gonna change when Forge World actually release uh, different um, carapace weapons such as the Gatling blasters and the um, twin Vulcan mega bolters and things like that. That's only going to increase. And the Warlord also has access to uh, beefier versions of the uh, Reaver Battle Titan weapons um, such as the Warlord Gatling Blaster, such as the Power Claw, which the Nemesis can't take, um, and some exotic weapons like the Saturnine Las Cutter or the Sun Fury Plasma Annihilator. And that's not forgetting that the Warlord can also take a uh, Mori Quake Cannon. It's a bit of a smaller Quake Cannon than that Nemesis one. Uh, it's a slightly shorter range at 360 inches instead of 480, but it does have better strength at strength 20 and it does have the rule uh, whereby uh, units hit by it, their move characteristic is, is halved. However, the Nemesis, that can fire at units not visible um, to, the, to the unit. Anyway, moving along the line then, looking at size comparisons, that's where it holds up uh, you know, size-wise uh, with the rest of the range. Uh, so you've got uh, the Warlord there on the left with the weapons and the head. Uh, will set you back £1,345, it's the most expensive Forge World model that they do, um, but that took me a long time to, to build and to paint. Then you've got the Nemesis, which has set you back 1000 you've got the Reaver Titan, which is 700 and then you've got the Warhound uh, at the end. Now that is a Lucius pattern uh, Warhound, I do own a, a Mars pattern, um, but again, one of those will set you back about 400 uh, So right there, ladies and gentlemen, in just the four models, you're looking at £3,500 on four models. Yes, you could buy a car or two, you could buy a, an all right motorcycle. This is one of the extreme ends of the hobby and just highlights the amount of money that, you know, a few people spend on the hobby and that's not including all of the other 
uh, you know, chapter models, all the other armies, all the other knights and things. So it can get to be a very expensive hobby. We're going to leave all of these out because I'm very scared about moving them and moving the nemesis and things, but we will focus on the nemesis because I think it's a nice, nice picture to, to end on. Okay, and then another size comparison I'd like to make is just with, uh, I say the Xenos uh, races. So on the left hand side, that big model of blackness, which I'm about to spray with lead belcher, is a an orc stomper. It's currently the largest uh, kind of titanic unit for orcs. Um, you can get a, a similar sized unit from Forge World, but all that's different with that is it's got like a belly gun and it's got a different uh, melee weapon, but they're pretty much the same height. Um, and then over on the right hand side is the largest model I could find for Necrons. It's kind of like a knight sized uh, unit. It's still classified as Titanic uh, in the description, um, but that's the largest um, Necron uh, uh, unit I have. And that shows you to some extent just how big the Nemesis is compared to other Xenos races. I'd probably say the Phantom Titan is, is almost the same height uh, as this Nemesis. The Revenant Titan and the uh, Phantom Titan from Eldar are another couple of examples which I would have liked to have um, compared uh, the Nemesis to, likewise the uh, Hierophant Titan um, for Tyranids, but alas, I do not own those models, so I can't bring them into the size comparison. Okay, so the last uh, size comparison I like to make, which I try and make with all of the videos, is just with the three models I, I normally do. Now, I've already got a Titan Guard Hoplite over there. Uh, as you can see, very, very small uh, mini, um, <laughs> I guess, compared to the uh, Nemesis. I'll give you a size comparison with the Legacy Space Marine, uh, Slime Marbo, and a Primaris. What have we found out? Well, we found out that, yeah, clearly the Nemesis Titan is uh, way bigger than just your normal standard troops. Um, it's such a huge model, such a showcase, um, but I thought I'd put these uh, size comparisons in because I like to do them with all of the models uh, that I review. We'll go through the rules for the uh, Warbringer Nemesis Titan. Uh, we'll go through both the 40K rules and the Horus Heresy, uh, we'll do the 40k rules first. Um, you can't find them in any book, but you can get the rules off of the Forge World website, so you can go and have a look at them now if you, if you want to see how it measures up to other Titans and things. I'm pretty sure that the rules will be in the upcoming compendium uh, by Forge World at some point soon, maybe in the next couple of weeks. Uh, if they're not already out, uh, so that'd be great. But I'll start off by saying it is a Lord of War choice, of course. Uh, it's a power points cost of 175, and it's a points cost of 5,000. Yes, you heard that right. It costs more than, you know, a couple of armies, few armies. It's 5,000 points, including all of the war gear. Now, its stat line, it's one of these units whereby its stat line is affected by the number of wounds it, uh, it has. So if it's got between 40 and 65 wounds, yes, it starts off with 65 wounds. Its movement speed is 18 inches. That's not that slow, <laughs> you know, uh, for a vehicle. It's 18 inch movement speed, which is the same as a Warlord. Its weapon skill is only 4+, plus, but it's not really needed. Ballistic skill is 2+, plus, and a Void Shield is 3+. Plus. So that's fantastic that the Ballistic skill is 2+. Plus. Again, that's the same as the uh, Warlord, and the same as all the Titans, really. The Warhound and the Reaver both have uh, 2+, plus as well. Its Void Shields is a save of 3+, plus at that point. Between 30 and 39 wounds, its movement speed drops to 14 inches. Weapon skill 4+, plus. Ballistic skill is now 3+, plus, and Void Shield save is 4+. Plus. Remaining wounds between 20 and 29, movement speed is 12 inches, weapon skill 5 plus, ballistic skill 4 plus, and void shields is 5 plus. And then remaining wounds 10 to 19, its movement speed is 10 inches, weapon skill 6 plus, ballistic skill 5 plus, and void shields are 5 plus. And then when it's only down to 1 to 9 wounds, its movement speed is only 8 inches, weapon skill 6 plus, ballistic skill 6 plus, and then the void shields are 6 plus. So it's almost on its last leg at that point. The rest of its stat line reads uh, strength is 13, toughness 13. Five attacks, leadership 10, and a save of 2 plus. So, to start off with, it's got 2 plus normal save and a 3 plus void shield save. It's a single model equipped with one Nemesis Quake Cannon, one Titanic Stride, two Anvilus Pattern Defense Batteries, three Ardex Defense Maulers, and two Arm Mounted Weapons. So, the Ardex Defense Maulers, which are those three um, point uh, weapons which we've looked at, uh, they're a range 36 inches, they're heavy 6, strength 6, AP minus 2, damage 2, and when firing Overwatch with the weapon, hit rolls of 5 or 6, score a hit on the charging unit. So, that's brilliant. So, you've got 5 or 6 on the uh, Overwatch there and they're six shot seats. So already you've got 18 shots just from the Mauler Bolt Cannons. The Anvilus Pattern Defense Batteries, the big anti-air uh, guns on the top of it, 
They're a whopping 72 inch range, heavy eight shot, strength eight, AP minus one, damage two, and the weapon can only target units that can fly. That's pretty straightforward. Still good, you're getting, again, 16 shots there with uh, the anti-air gun. So, so far we're up to 32 shots. Uh, the Nemesis Quake Cannon, the big, big weapon, one of the main reasons you'll get this Titan, it has a minimum range of 24 inches. So if you get within the 24 inch bubble, I say you're gonna be safe. <laughs> Um, but it goes up to 480 inches, uh, which is actually the longest range weapon in the whole of 40k, other than like the, some of the weapons that have unlimited range, of course, like some of the missiles have unlimited range. Um, but the Apocalypse Missile Launcher, for instance, uh, that I say only has a range of 360 inches. But it's a macro 3d6, it's strength 16, AP minus 5, damage 6. The weapon can target units that are not visible to the bearer. And if a unit is a hit by any attacks made with this weapon, uh, then until the end of its next movement phase, its move characteristic is halved and it cannot advance. I won't go through the Gatling Blaster or the Laser Blaster or the Melter Cannon, um, but I will go through the Volcano Cannon and the Titanic stri Stride. As I say, you can find the rules for free on the Forge World website. So the Reaver Volcano Cannon, which it's equipped with two, is a range 180 inches, macro D6, strength 25, AP minus five, and a damage of 12. The Titanic Stride is the melee weapon. It's a strength of the user, which would be 13, AP minus three, damage three, and you make three hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon. So getting 15 attacks in close combat at a weapon skill of four plus at strength 13. Not, not too bad, but you're also getting damage three. <laughs> War gear options, uh, model is equipped with two arm mounted weapons from the following list, Reaver Glattling Blaster, Reaver Volcano Cannon, Reaver Laser Blaster or Reaver Melter Cannon. Abilities then, Imperial God Engine. This model can fall back in the movement phase and still shoot and or charge in the same turn. When this model falls back, it can move over enemy infantry and swarm models, though it must end its move more than one inch from any enemy units. This model can shoot in the shooting phase, even if there are enemy models within one inch of it, unless those models are Titanic. In addition, this model can move and fire heavy weapons without suffering the penalty to its hit rolls. Finally, this model only benefits from being in cover if at least half of the model is obscured from the firer. Icon of Imperial Might, add D6 to the result of morale test for units whilst they are within 12 inches of any enemy uh, units with this ability. Brilliant. Titanic Gate, when this model advances, add eight inches to its move characteristic for that movement phase instead of rolling one D6. Titan Void Shields. Instead of making a saving throw or invulnerable saving throw for a wound allocated to the model as a result of an attack with a ranged weapon, you can roll 1d6. If the result is equal to or higher than the Void Shield value shown on the damage table above, the damage is prevented and the attack sequence ends. Amazing. In addition, each time this model suffers a mortal wound, you roll 1d6. If the result is equal to or higher than the Void Shield's value shown on the damage table above, the mortal wound is ignored. And then Cataclysmic Explosion. The model is reduced to zero wounds. What? Roll 1d6 before removing it from the battlefield. On a five or six, it suffers Cataclysmic Explosion, and each unit within 3d6 suffers 2d6 mortal wounds. Amazing. And that works exactly like the Cataclysmic Explosion of the Warlord. So one there's the question whether they have similar kind of reactors and things involved um, if they're going to be emitting the same explosion. Keywords, Imperium, Adeptus Titanicus, Titanic, Vehicle, God Engine, Warbringer, Nemesis Titan. So that's the 40k rules. Let's go through the Horus Heresy rules. A Warbringer Nemesis Titan will cost you 2,100 points. Its weapon skill is 2 plus, ballistic skill is 4, strength 10. It has an armor value, so the front is 15. Side is 14, rear is 12, initiative 2, attacks 2, and hold points is 24. Of course, the war gear is a hull mounted Nemesis Quake Cannon, two carapace mounted Anvilus pattern defense batteries, three Ardex Defensor Mauler Bolt Cannon turrets, two arm mounted Reaver Laser Blasters. Special rules is Night Vision, Reactor Meltdown, God Engine, Heavy Structure, Void Shields 6, Towering Monstrosity. Uh, the options, of course, you can swap out any of the arm mounted weapons for a Reaver Gatling Blaster, Volcano Cannon, or Melter Cannon. The rules are slightly different. Uh, for this, for Horus Heresy, uh, it's got a reactor meltdown rule where if it suffers a titanic explosion result on the catastrophic damage table, its reactor goes nuclear. This is the same as a titanic explosion, except that all hits are re resolved at destroyer hits. Uh, God engine, all mechanic units within 24 inches and on the same side as the model with this special rule are fearless. Void shields, it's got six. Um, so each hit scored against a warbringer. Um, Titan will instead hit a void shield whilst at least one remains active. Close combat attacks come from inside the shield, are therefore not stopped. Void shields have an armor value of 12. Any glancing uh, or penetrating hit 
uh, or any hit from a destroyer weapon. Scored against the Void Shields causes them to collapse, and after all of them have collapsed, further hits strike the uh, Warbringer instead. At the end of each of the Titan's turns, you roll a d6 for each collapsed Void Shield, and a roll of 5 plus instant restores one collapsed shield. So at least that's a decent thing about uh, the Horus Heresy, is that you can keep restoring the Void Shields, and I think that's quite realistic. Uh, I can see the um, benefits of the, the 40k rules, in that the more damage it takes, uh, the less the Void Shields become effective. But likewise, I can also see how uh, a very wounded... Um, Titan uh, can still raise can raise decent void shields if they you know divert the power from weapons to void shields or something like that. Uh, heavy structure. The Warbringer Nemesis has an invulnerable save of six plus against any attacks that have breached its void shields. And then towering monstrosity. A Titan may never be locked in assault. The Warbringer Nemesis Titan may only be hit on a six by infantry and monstrous creatures of any type in assault, and by five or six by super heavy walkers and gargantuan creatures in assault. The Titan is completely immune to the effects of haywire attacks, dangerous terrain and psychic attacks other than witch fire powers, which must attempt to damage it normally. The Warbringer Nemesis Titan's carapace mounted weapons may not target models closer than 20 inches from its hull unless they are flyers, flying monstrous creatures or super heavy vehicles or gargantuan creatures. Obviously the w weapons work a little bit differently. So the Quake Cannon is a range of 20 inches to 480. It's got them um, uh, slashes, forward slashes, so the strength to begin with is um, damage destroyer, then nine, then six, then AP three. So it's a primary one weapon, it's apocalyptic uh, blast, barrage, seismic shock, concussive, and strike down. So you'd use the big apocalyptic blast template, the one that you pretty much have to build, um, and you know, around the smallest um, hole is, uh, is the destroyer hit. Then uh, a little bit further from that is the strength nine, then strength six. Um, seismic shock is the unique rule for it. Units which suffer wounds or hull points lost from this attack may only move at half their usual maximum movement, may not run, charge or go flat out and count as being in dangerous terrain. And then the defence batteries have slightly different rules. Um, it's range 72 inch, uh, strength 7, AP 4, heavy 4, twin link, sonder, skyfire and interceptor. So one could argue they're you know, slightly better um, rules there uh, for the Horus Heresy um, in terms of the uh, anti-air uh, batteries. That's my exhaustive uh, list of rules. I, I'd like to cover all of the rules uh, for these Titans in both 40k and Horus Heresy. So I know that that was a lot to take in. Um, no doubt the rules are going to be slightly tweaked in the new compendium that's coming out um, soon. I finished this Titan a couple of weeks or a few weeks ago and I've got all the Titans out and I felt that it was about the right time to do this review. And I want to get on with um, painting it after I finished a, a Warhound that I'm currently working on. So it just felt like the right time to uh, do this review. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, I hope this gives you a very unique uh, look and view at Titans and just the cost of them. They are my favourite um, sort of faction out of all of 40k and Horus Heresy. The Titan Legions, they, there's just something about them um, that rings true to me. Plans for the future, there will be a battle report. I am in touch with a, a guy that has a similar sized Titan Legion than me. You will see a battle report on this um, uh, channel. What do you guys think of this model and uh, the Titans and the build guides and everything like that? Please do put your thoughts and opinions down below and also suggest which Titan you'd like to see next. I'd love an Imperator class Titan, but we're talking probably double the height or a third of the height bigger. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to fit it into the shot if I just move the camera up. We're talking of an Imperator probably, yeah, right at the top of the, the camera maybe, um, probably a bit taller. And yeah, who even knows how much one of those would, uh, would set us back. Um, but at least for now, we've got these. I never even thought that we'd see a Reaver Titan, let alone a Warlord Titan. I'm so pleased that Forge World and uh, Will Hayes and the team uh, managed to, to bring these, um, and Darren Parr would have managed to bring these models to life. And I hope that they're working on um, something almost as impressive. Anyway, thank you ever so much for joining me for this Titanic review. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.